RealAgriculture.com's coverage of the Southwest Ag Conference in Richtown, Ontario is brought to you by High Stick NT, CNM Seeds, and Pride Seeds. And, uh, we're here today at RealAgriculture.com with Helen Spicer with uh, Omafra. Welcome to the Helen. Right, it's good to be here. Helen, let's talk a little bit about uh, the storage of, of uh, grain and uh, I guess all across all the commodities in Ontario. Uh, is there a certain time you should turn the fan on or off? Like a lot, I hear a lot of people say, oh hey, it's snowing outside, I need to turn my fan off so I don't suck moisture into the bin. Uh, those kinds of misconceptions. Okay, there's, uh, there's basically two types of uh, grains, those that take on moisture very easily and those that it's very difficult to, to add moisture to. Uh, high temperature dried corn likely falls into, or does fall into the uh, difficult to add moisture. In the drying process, we've, we've dried that kernel and we've driven that moisture out and it, you really have to screw it up to, to add moisture to any great consequence. Right. Uh, compared to, to small grains, let's say, or soybeans or dry beans for that matter, uh, they change moisture content uh, in relation to outside uh, ambient relative humidity very, very easily. And anybody that's combined grain knows that when the dew starts to settle, the straw gets tough and the wheat uh, moisture goes up so uh, you know it doesn't thresh as well so with a small grain like that if you aerate at the wrong time you can actually add moisture to the grain and uh, luckily the worst thing you can do is uh, if you're dealing with tough grain grain that's higher than desirable moisture content let's say shortly after harvest that you know we got it off before the rains but unfortunately it was a bit tougher than we'd like uh, the worst thing you can do is run the fan day and night because the progress that you make in the daytime by putting dry air through that grain uh, basically is undone by running that fan through the evening hours. So you should turn the fan off at night then? Yes, if we're dealing with, with uh, small grains, let's say. Um, so to know when to turn the fan on and off, uh, around 70% relative humidity is sort of a sweet spot. Uh, at 70% relative humidity and normal harvest temperatures in that 15 to 20 to 25 degrees uh, Celsius temperature range, 70% uh, moisture content or relative humidity gets you gets the grain pretty much where you want it, in that right. 13, 14%. So if the air is uh, lower than 70% relative humidity, you're going to dry grain down to around 14, 15%. If the relative humidity is higher as it is in the evening or if there's a weather front coming through, then the grain is going to respond. So above 70% relative humidity, the grain moisture will go up. We've had some uh, fluctuating temperatures here in Ontario the last, well, even the last week. You know, on the yeah. weekend it was, I think people were in London were telling me like plus eight. Uh, this week we're, you know, a little bit below zero. Does that fluctuating temperature, when we're getting up to plus eight, back down to, you know, minus three, does that raise concerns in the bin? It, it should to, to every producer that has grain in storage because uh, if the sun is shining and the ambient temperature is, is going above seasonal, uh, the sun's going to warm the bin walls and the warm outside conditions are going to warm the bin walls which then warms the air directly inside the air film just inside the wall and then warm air starts to rise and we have uncontrolled convective air movement cells establishing in the bin. If we don't uh, watch the bin carefully and monitor it and aerate at the proper time, those Convective air cells, which turn into moisture pumps, can cause a storage problems very, very quickly. How, so do, we, how do we break that? The, the way to break that is to keep the grain temperature within 5 centigrade degrees of the average outside air temperature. In other words, if the grain is close to outside air temperature, there's no temperature differential, there's no way for those convective air cells to stop, or, or to start rather. Uh, so if we have warm conditions uh, and it's an extended period of time, let's say upwards of a week, then we should go in there and we should aerate. If it's gr a cereal in the, in the bin, then we want to make sure that the air relative humidity is 70% or less, or we could start to add moisture to that grain. Do you find that a lot of farmers treat uh, corn, soy, and wheat the same when they're, when they're managing in the bin? That's kind of a misconception. A lot of them look at it, to, yeah, to, to some extent that, you know, what works for corn will, will work for the others, and no, they are different. Uh, corn is, high temperature dried corn is one thing. Uh, small grains and beans are something totally different. You've got to be more careful. You've got to manage the fan uh, a little bit better. 
uh, if we're dealing with uh, cereals and and, uh, and beans. Mm -hmm. Corn, you you it's really tough to to do the wrong thing with corn. It's it's fairly uh, unforgiving and it doesn't cause us problems nearly as quickly. Uh, what, what about, I uh, hear a lot of farmers say, uh, what I do is I, I pull a load out uh, and basically cycle the grain every yep. so often. Is that a good practice? Yeah, and commercial elevators to turn the grain, which basically says, means we take it out of this container or silo and we put it into this one. And in that process, we get to see it all, we can smell it all, we can sample it, yep. and it breaks up any surprises that we may have in there. If we do that in really cold weather, going up and down the elevator leg and down the spouting, we, we basically chill that grain as well if it's done in the dead of winter as well. Um, but you should sort of have a look at that grain from time to time. Uh, taking a, a load out from time to time and, and selling it or whatever uh, basically gives you a chance to look to see what's happening in that center of the bin, mm -hmm. unloading from the top. Uh, and if it looks good and there's no crusty, chunky, green, moldy, furry, uh, pieces in there, then uh, you're, you're good for now, but don't forget about it because usually the problem happens quickest in the spring because the fields start to get fit, we start to get busy working on the fields, and uh, well intentioned, we should get back and check that bin, we should get back and yeah. check the bin. Three, four, or five weeks go by because of planting pressures and spring work pressures. Well, my next question was is as we get, we're two months away from winter being over, pretty much. Uh, you know, what do we need to be thinking about in terms of getting in out of winter into spring? What 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 bad things can happen? How do we manage it? Uh, a couple of bad things can happen. One for the, the grains, and we'll deal with the grains first. Um, first thing you have to realize is if you've got insects in the grain, once that grain temperature gets above 17 degrees Celsius, if you've got bugs, they're going to start to get active. They're going to start to breed. They're going to start to multiply. They're going to start to eat and crap in their nest, whatever you want, yeah. uh, so we, we need to stay on top of it. So my recommendation is for producers to, in the spring, don't be in a big rush to warm it up because once we get it warm, uh, we're never going to get it cool again or cold again because uh, we're into May and you know there are, our lows would be 10, 15 degrees C. And, yeah. uh, we know if we can keep the grain cold and in good condition that it's going to keep for a long period of time. But you know we have to remember those convective aerosols. They do start to move, and it's it happens whether you put a bag or a lid on the fan or not. It's happening yeah. inside the bin, well, totally I, out of your control. I remember as a kid, you, know, you would lose a portion of the bin, and you'd hear uh, people say, well, we, we checked a while ago, it was fine, or we had the fan on, it was fine. You yeah. know, why, why is it bad now? No, I think as we get into spring, we should at least, uh, likely every couple weeks, turn the fan on, climb up, stick your head in there. If it smells sweet and fresh, mm. life is good. If it starts to... Your nose can pick off off odors much earlier than you can see a problem developing yeah. in the grain. Yeah, so if it's bad, obviously it's a very, very terrible smell. It's musty or just doesn't smell. Good grain smells sweet. Yeah. Okay. And and it doesn't give you that musty, earthy smell. And uh, you know, if your glasses aren't fogging up, means there isn't a, sort of a blast of moisture hitting you from a, a pocket. That's uh, because as grain starts to go out of condition, it generates moisture, and then. As the fan turns on, if you happen to be wearing glasses, they'll fog up, and that should be an indicator that something's something's changed. And then it, it's the the farmer's responsibility to start digging deeper and saying whether he samples or probes or draws out a load to see what is the problem, how big is it, where is it, and then take some action to rectify it. Helmut, thanks a lot. Okay, okay. we'll talk. Good. To you.